Hey, in today's video, I want us to talk about why problematic YouTubers rise to the top. In the past month alone, we have heard about so much alleged bad behavior from huge creators like James Charles, Jake Paul, David Dobrik, Darty Dom. And just for the purposes of not being censored by YouTube, I'm going to refer to bad behavior as problematic, toxic, bad behavior, hurtful behavior. But it really is the A word and the S A word because a lot of this behavior that has happened is just illegal. But anyway, when you hear all this, you can't help but wonder why is it that so many creators would hurt their followers? Or why do so many people uplift creators that are problematic? And so there are a few subjects that I want us to quickly cover in this video. First, how capitalism rewards results. Second, how social media rewards toxic behavior. And three, what can we possibly do about it? Now, first of all, there is a myth that capitalism rewards hard work. And it is just a myth. If you have been watching my series, Marx and Chill, in which we covered Marx text, and we chill. <laughs> now, one of the big pillars of capitalism is that Competition allows people to work hard and for the best businesses to rise to the top, right? But it turns out that's just not the case. Let's say there are two grocery stores in your town. They're gonna, of course, try to make their stores a little bit different, a little bit special so they get your business. But another component of that might be one might have lower prices. And let's just be honest, for you as a consumer, that's great. Like, that is the best thing that can happen, that people start competing on price because you can now afford whatever that store is selling. However, in the long term, if they both start competing on price, they have no other option but to undercut one another to the point where eventually they will start losing money. And in that case, only the store that has more money or more access to money, more access to resources, maybe they have better connections at the bank or something like that, the store that can undercut themselves for the longest will actually beat the competition, right? In the long term, that's not really good for the town in general because, well, now that other business is out of work and there's now more people that need jobs, right? And this other one store becomes a monopoly. They can up their prices even though there were low prices before, they can lower their wages because they don't even have to compete with the other workplace in terms of hiring people, etc, etc. I mean, you already know what Walmart and Amazon have done to their competitors. And why do I bring this up? Because if competition is a big pillar of capitalism, then when we really inspect it, we can tell that capitalism does not reward hard work necessarily. Capitalism rewards people that already have money or that can figure out how to amass wealth and it's kind of a snowball effect that person that has money more resources can figure out how to be their competition the longest which means they're going to make more money which means they can compete for longer which means they make more money which makes them etc 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 but and why do i bring that up because i feel like youtube works the same way youtube operates under capitalism YouTube is not rewarding people's hard work necessarily. YouTube rewards, and on social media platforms, YouTube rewards creators that can create results, which will inevitably create profits or money for them. Let's say you have two channels and they start making videos. Well, whoever can figure out how to get more views, more engagement, right? that's going to be pushed out into more new viewers because of course the platform can tell that you're bringing in more views, you're bringing in more engagement, you must be an amazing creator. Let's show you to more people so that more people can be engaged on our platform. But I feel like just like the two grocery stores example, the person on YouTube with more resources can more likely grow faster than somebody that doesn't. Let's say a creator does figure out how to make good videos that are getting views, they're getting engagement, their channel finally becomes monetized, eventually they can quit their day job, this becomes their new job, they can put all their attention in it, right? And of course, on YouTube, most videos are free, so people cannot compete on price. But what people are competing on is level of production, or more often than not, I feel like people will compete by making more and more videos. Even if you don't have money, there are other resources such as 
time that can be used to compete with other people. Let's say somebody that has a full time, but they do YouTube on the side, right? Their hours are kind of counted. And believe it or not, even a 15 minute video can take up to 20 hours or more a week to produce, right? So they're kind of like battling time. And a person with just more free time can easily create more and more videos. And while we really don't know exactly what the algorithm likes on YouTube, we know that it rewards engagement, views, and frequency of uploads. And so that's why I feel like even a person that has more resources, even if that resource is time, in the long run will be rewarded more or more quickly than the person that is going at a slower pace because of a lack of resources, which I feel like it's very similar to the grocery store example. It's not the hard work that the creator is putting into making the video that's being rewarded. It's your ability to, to produce results that the platform inevitably rewards. Now let's talk a little bit more about the YouTube algorithm because I've been intentionally creating one video a week for the past year now for the first time even though i made my channel a long time ago and as a creator when you start putting your focus on youtube you really start to notice what things get views right and let me just tell you very easily what gets views it is controversial videos even if the creator is not purposely creating a controversial harmful video a controversial subject will result in more views, you know why? Because it results in more likes and dislikes and more arguments in the comment section of that video. And so even if all your comments are negative, even if you have the most thumb downs of any video, you will definitely get more views on your video that has more thumbs down than any other because the platform will read that as engagement and it will show it to more people. Now, imagine that kind of reward system on a person that has a, a more morally questionable character. The incredible thing about all these problematic YouTubers, creators, whatever, is that it's not that they just suddenly one day made like made a huge mistake that nobody saw coming. The thing about every single creator that is controversial, harmful to their viewers, the only thing thing that they have in common is that they were that way from day one anywhere from just being very dramatic and controversial getting into conflict with other creators creating drama all the way to being hurtful to their viewers or being hurtful to the audience like creating controversial slash hurtful emotionally hurtful videos and as a creator of course it makes sense to connect the dots like these people are rising to the top because social media platforms are rewarding engagement without even taking a look in any way shape or form or in any way regulating how you get your views a person that is more willing to engage in bad behavior in order to get attention will see that the platform is rewarding them and will be not just feel comfortable but they will be encouraged to repeat that over and over again and, and not just repeat, but to top themselves, which is how we have arrived at so many of these creators making such hurtful videos because they have to up the ante time and time again. And it's a snowball effect. And imagine even if not all their viewers were encouraging them, even if there were people in the comments saying, I think this is a bad choice, like you missed the mark, you shouldn't have done that, you shouldn't have said that. That is just more engagement on that video. And if you've ever read YouTube comments, you know how easy it is for comments to escalate into full-blown fights. And so the creator themselves doesn't even have to reply to any comments for people to engage into fights and up the engagement on that person's videos and for the platform to just share that video more and more. And so I kind of feel like if you're a problematic creator, you're just gonna be encouraged to create problematic videos over and over and over again and you will be rewarded faster than people that are not necessarily creating problematic videos oh and of course can you imagine what a person with questionable character will do when they have access to millions of people through their phone like that has never happened in the history of humanity like that is new territory and of course that's not to say that 
everybody that has a big channel is problematic so many creators that are responsible with their platforms that want to educate people or at the very least just entertain and leave them with positive feelings feeling better about themselves but i just can't help but think that the current model of social media is the perfect reward system in which a problematic creator can thrive and that's how we end up with so many of the huge creators having questionable relationships with their followers putting questionable videos after another and it's only when enough people look back and bring this up to the surface often people with huge platforms like you know right now h3 often these creators go unnoticed i feel like of course the platform has a huge responsibility in terms of curbing this kind of behavior and it's a huge problem i mean it's not even just the fact that creators on youtube tiktok are being hurtful towards their audience members i mean in the past four years we have realized the level of influence that something like facebook can have on our lives like literally on who's the president what issues come to the surface do we believe in science or not social media's platforms have to do something about this because it is a huge problem it's becoming a huge huge problem that is affecting our lives our mental health i mean it's crazy it's not just youtube drama i really despise the fact that people don't want to talk about this subject and pretend that this is just youtube drama because it's not, it's people's lives. People are suffering due to somebody having a huge platform, somebody that does not deserve to have the platform. And another narrative that really bothers me is this whole idea that, oh, in the early to mid 2000s, it was okay to be racist, it was okay to be homophobic, it was just an attempt at edgy humor. No, it wasn't. It has never been okay to be homophobic, it's never been okay to be racist, it's never been okay to be hurtful towards people. It was just that it was happening in spaces on the internet that were not regulated. And it's so sad that it's only when advertisers can make money that the platform is, of course, motivated to do something about these problematic creators. Which is why these problematic videos were allowed to run on the platform for so long. Because as long as advertisers don't care or weren't paying attention, then the platform has no motivation under capitalism to do anything about it. Because capitalism does not care about ethics, capitalism does not care about your mental health, capitalism does not care about crimes. Capitalism only cares about profits and it cares about rewarding people that can create profits, which is more often than not people that already have wealth or have the ability to amass wealth and just make more profits out of that. Now, as users, what can we possibly do? I feel like we're in a somewhat helpless position, but there's nothing that we can do except bring attention to these issues that are happening. Sadly, if the only way the platforms are gonna take action will be if their advertisers take action, then maybe what we can do is like what I have been seeing on social media, which is people starting to message their advertisers directly and say is this who you want to sponsor is this who you want to give your money to is this who you want to put in front of your customers because as we saw with david dobrik for example once the advertisers start to drop one by one then it's just a domino effect and then youtube does something about it in the case of james charles i still can't believe we're a month into it and morphe's still standing by him youtube hasn't yet to do anything about it i mean this is crazy this is this isn't even the A word, this is like literal crimes that we're talking about. If a creator confesses to a crime on video, how are you going to tell me that you're still going to stand by him because he makes you money? And of course, as a viewer, it makes you feel very helpless. As an, and as a creator, it makes you feel very like disgusted. Like you, you value this person because they're bringing you money that's it you don't value people's hard work you don't value people's effect on the audience you don't you don't value your creators but what the platform tells you is that it does not value the creators it just values its profits and like i've mentioned in this video multiple times unfortunately that is capitalism in a nutshell now as a viewer i think we do have a responsibility to stop engaging with those problematic creators like that's literally all we can do because even fighting in the comments of the video leaving bad comments critical comments thumbs down 
like I mentioned earlier in the video, that is just going to make that creator bigger. <laughs> like, it literally makes no sense. And so, while I think it's good that you use, if you have a platform, you use your platform to either give survivors a place to share their story or just amplify their story that already exists somewhere or just flat out call out problematic behavior. I think another side of that for everybody in general is just stop engaging with problematic creators. Wait until T channels cover their latest drama or whatever. And I get that that's really hard because like, you know when you're driving in the freeway and there's an accident, you you want to watch. Like you know that you want to want, you know you're trying not to crash but you want to watch the crash that just happened next to you. Like it's human nature, but that just literally makes that person's platform bigger. Even if you feel like you're not engaging, even if you just, you're just a silent view, the platform will read that and will literally share the video to more people. Like you're literally hoping that problematic person get a bigger platform if you engage in any way, shape or form with their video. Unfortunately, some people have shown over and over again that they are not responsible enough to have contact with their followers and i feel like at a certain point the platform just has to pull the plug in some way or another and i know that's like a harsh statement but i feel like there should be a hard line that should not be crossed when it's like you're committing crimes against your followers for example like if you're hurting your followers you don't deserve to have any platform on the internet. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comments what you think about this whole thing. At what point does a platform have the responsibility to ensure that their creators are not hurting their viewers, their followers, etc, etc. And do you think it's fair that it's basically at this point the viewers and the community's responsibility to police that behavior to for lack of a better word because the platform is unwilling to do so thank you for watching if you still are subscribe if you like to continue talking about world domination and i'll see you in the next one